And good evening, Ironman fans. This is Hayden Milliken reporting live from Ernst Field in the first capital of the Buckeye State, Chillicothe, Ohio, USA, for tonight's contest between the Bishop Watterson Eagles and the Jackson Ironman. Record of 10 and 2, and the Bishop Watterson Eagles coming in with a record of 11 and 1. Bishop Watterson representing the Central Catholic League, and Jackson representing the FAC, the Frontier Athletic Conference. We have about 15 and a half minutes left until kickoff here at Ernst Stein Field. We would like to thank you for joining us. It's sure to be quite the exciting football game coming ahead. I'm not going to want to miss it. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm going to be right here. We're going to be locked, and we are only 15 again minutes away. The second meeting between the Jackson Ironmen and the Bishop Watterson Eagles. The first one being in 2015 here at this very field in Chillicothe when Jackson came away with a 14 to nothing win. Still under the leading score in the first quarter of play. Ever since then, the Bishop Watterson Eagles have been on a roll. They have two wins in the first quarter of play. Then they have won two straight and three weeks in a row. Bishop Waters has only lost this season. Coming to Tiffin Columbia, the score was 42-37. Jackson with two losses to Tri-Valley and Ironton, respectively. Definitely some players to look out here for when it comes to Bishop Waterson. Dominic Purcell, linebacker, 13 and a half tackles in the last game against London. And that game, 41-22 was the score. And for Jackson, they faced off against the Granville Blue Aces. And the score was 41-7. to And now we're going to kick it to the Jackson Marching Ironman. The Jackson Ironman, should I say? We will be going to the camera in just a second. Some technical issues will quickly be resolved. But as you may be able to hear right now, the Jackson marching. We are 13 and a half minutes away from Ironman and Eagle football here at the OHSAA tournament. The winner of this game will go on to face the winner of the 11-1 Sheridan Generals and the 11-1 Bloom Carroll Bulldogs. And hopefully, maybe we will have some scores for that. I will try to get some of those for you, the listeners, the viewers, as we get them. Maybe a little out of date, but uh, no score. Yeah, I'd rather have a score than no score. the alma mater. If anyone can see this, we just had the Star Spangled Banner, the National Anthem play. As again, we'd like to thank every veteran for their service and their dedication and sacrifices to this great country. It is veterans like them that allow us to have football Friday night like tonight. Twelve minutes from game time, the clock stopped at twelve. The Jackson marching Ironmen make their way off the field. Uh, 
Now, an interesting fact about the Bishop Waterson Eagles coaching staff, there are five, count them five, former Ohio State Buckeyes on board the coaching staff. Those would be Jerry Rosinski, Jeff Yulinek, who was a center for Dan Marino in Miami, the Dolphins, Lenny Mills, who was a player in the Woody Hayes and Earl Bruce regimes, respectively, Brady Taylor, and Greg Belisari. Five Buckeyes. Anyone want to have a hot spot? That's what we Let me know when we get back on. I know, I, I get it. I was just telling him to let me know. No. It says excellent connection. Let's see if it sticks. Is it supposed to show the picture or something right here?
All right, everyone, we are here. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I'm Hayden Milliken. We're going to try this again as we are 30 seconds away from Jackson Ironman football as we take on the Bishop Watterson Eagles. The Bishop Watterson Eagles won the coin toss. They elect to defer to the second half. We are getting ready for the opening kickoff, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm glad you could join us this evening. Nolan Johnson, Cade Wolford back deep to return. You ready for the kickoff? Are you ready, Ironman fans, for some football? I know I am. The crowd pumped. I'm pumped. And here's the kickoff, and football is underway. And it'll be a touchback. The Ironman will start at the 20 yard line. And out comes Jacob Winters and the Jackson Ironman offense. Last week, Hade Wolford 109 rushing yards on 24 carries and 241 overall rushing yards. Jackson tends to go to the ground game. But with the rain earlier today and this one right now, we will see if they continue to go with the ground game. There's the handoff up the field. And he was marked on that was number 28, Eli Broman. That'll be good enough for a Jackson first down. Shotgun formation, three receivers to the right. On our left down. Broerman in motion, hands it off. Eli Broerman breaks the tackle and will be tackled down short. Way short. It'll be a gain of four, bringing up second and six. Second and eight, excuse me. Ball the 33 yard line. Two plays, both to Eli Broerman. Holders in the gun, once again, three receivers to the right this time in motion. Going down the field. I'll bring up third down and two. Dave Wolford. Dave Wolford with the game. Third down and two. Winners under center. Winners on the keep. Going to run the ball. First down and some change. The 50. And will go out of bounds at around the 45 yard line of the Bishop Watterson Eagles. Mark at the 44 yard line. Jackson Ironman marching on house. Marching into Bishop Watterson territory, knocking on their door. Another first down. Winners in the gun. Wolford in motion. Wolford will be brought down, and he'll be short. Brings up second down. Short game there. A gain of six. Second and four. Let's go, Red! Let's get it going! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two, okay, three receivers lined up to the right. Winners of the gun. Winners going to keep it with the draw. Moves back, breaks the tackle, and moves ahead. 
and he is taken down by an army of eagles. Short of the first down, that'll bring up a third. They've been held at the line, they're gonna give him a gain of one, third and three. Officials call it a timeout. They'll properly spot the ball. The clock continuing to wind down. Nine minutes left in the first quarter. For those tuning in, the score is Jackson 0, Bishop Watterson 0. Winners in the gun, handing it off to Eli Borman. Eli Borman will, feels like he will get the first down, perhaps. And the chains are moving. That'll be another Jackson first down. Back it up, boys. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Give us the break. You gotta stay back. Back up! Back up! Let's go! Back up! Let's go! 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 let us go let That was Dominic Purcell on the table. Brings up second down. No game. Dragon continuing to move closer to the end zone. Winners in the gun. Broerman in motion. Hands it off. Eli Broerman. And a flag thrown. And that one goes against Bishop Watterson. It's Jackson. Continuing to move further and further. It's fine. Be a face mask. That's what they're calling on Bishop Watterson. Clock continuing to run now. Hands it off. Cade Wolford breaks the tackle, finds an opening. Touchdown, Ironman. Cade Wolford. Puts the Ironman on the board in the first quarter. The Ironman move up the field 80 yards and will get the first score of the ball game. So we prepare for the extra point attempt. Here's are going to be going for two, staying out here as winners. Going for a two-point conversion attempt early on to get an eight-point lead. Broerman moving to the left, tosses it back to Cade Wolford. Cade Wolford gets a block, and he will be in the two-point conversion attempt. Is good. Eight to nothing is the score. The Ironmen lead the Eagles here at Hernstein Field. 7.47 remaining in the first. The Jackson Ironman, 80 yards on that. Collectively, and to begin the ball game. Right up for the kickoff. Ryan Rudinsky back to return, and Charlie Bernatus. And here's the kick. And this one will be returned by Bishop Watterson at the 10, around the 15, moves up, breaks some tackles, the 30, and will be tripped up. And if he was not tripped up there, that would have potentially been six. Jackson with a big play there on special teams. That was Ryan Brusinski in on the return. This will bring out A.J. McCannich. 
and the Bishop Watterson offense. Mechanic in the gun, hands it off. And he is taken down. Jacob Winters in on the tackle. And Cade Wolford with initial contact brings up second and nine, a gain of one. Eight to nothing is the score after a two point conversion was successful by the Ironman. Rolls to the right. There's the pass, and it is it is caught. And it will be close to the 45, around the 44-yard line for Bishop Watterson, and that will be enough for a first and 10. McCannish in the gun, hands it off. Brandon Trout and Braden Powell on the tackle, and that'll bring up second down. It'll be second and ten, no gain on the play. McCannish, pistol formation. Hands it off. And that is Zach Weber, and he will get a big gain, and that'll be just short of the first down, I believe. It's going to be third down, and maybe about three or four. I'm going to give him third and one, actually, for progress moving ahead. Third down and one, eight nothing is the score. Mechanich hands it off, and there will be the first down for Bishop Watterson, breaking a tackle, and two Ironmen in on that one. That was Jacob Winters and Braden Powell, both on the tackle there for the Ironmen. But again, good enough for a Bishop Watterson first down. And it'll be at the 47-yard line of the Ironmen. Bishop Watterson looking to retaliate with a score of their own after Jackson got on the board with a touchdown and got a deuce outdoors with a two-point conversion. McCannish back to throw. There's the pass. It is caught, and that was caught by Ryan Rosinski. And it was number 21, Bo Landrum on the tackle. Brings up second down. McCannish pistol formation again, and he will pitch it back. That is Zach Weber. Zach Weber has some room, some daylight. The 30, the 20, and he is down. And he may be just shy of the 10-yard line, and that is a big gain for the Eagles as they move oh so close to the end zone. 4.27 remaining here, marked out of bounds. And they're going to mark the ball at the 10-yard line, so it will be first and goal, Bishop Watterson. McCannish hands it off to Rosinski. Rosinski right down the middle, pushes in. Is he in? And he will be short. Jacob Winters in on the tackle, brings up second and goal. The ball will be at the two-yard line. McCandish in the gun, Rosinski to the right, hands off to Rosinski. Rosinski marches in, 
And we'll get in the diamond. They're going to say he is short again at the one-yard line. Some argument there from the Bishop Watterson fans thinking that he was in, but no, it will be third and goal at the one-yard line. One yard separating the Eagles from six. McCannish under center. Purcell and Rosinski, I formation, will dive in, and there's a touchdown for Bishop Watterson. This QB sneak by McCannish puts six on the board for Bishop Watterson. Eight to six is the score, and they will be lining up for the extra point attempt. It'll be Rudy Kessinger kicking the ball. The snap, the kick is up, and it is good. Eight to seven. The Ironman leading by only one point. 3.04 remaining in the first quarter. Lining up for the kickoff. The Ironman will be getting the ball once again with 3.04 in the first. Lining up. Cade Wolford will be back to receive this for the Ironman. How will the Ironman respond after the Bishop Watterson Eagles got a touchdown? There's the kick, and it is a deep one, and it will be once again a touchback. The Ironman will start at the 20-yard line. And if we saw, if we see what we saw in the last drive, from Eli Browerman and Kate Wolford and Jacob Winters, that we may have ourselves quite a ball game if that continues throughout the duration of it. Winners under center, Eli Browerman and Kate Wolford split backs, hands it off to Kate Wolford. And Cade Wolford will bolt down the field and will be short of the first down. Second and short. It'll be second down and two to be exact. Ryland Arnold in on the tackle for Bishop Watterson. Winners under center again, once again, split backs. We'll hand it off. That should be enough for the first down. It is. Cade Wolford on the ball carry, and it will be Jackson first down. Hands it off again. That appears to be Cade. I see that was Eli Borman on the ball carry. And a short game. Tyler Liu on the ball carry. They're going to mark it second and five with little less than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. A minute 50. The Ironmen at their own 39-yard line. Winners in the gun, three receivers to the right. Wolford in motion, hands it off. Cade Wolford, and no, oh, he will be taken down. Oh no, Cade Wolford did have the ball. Excuse me. And there'll be third down and four, a gain of one. Looks like 
Jackson needs a first down right here. Flitters in the gun once again. Three receivers to the right. This time it will be a pass play. Pass to Wolford. Wolford breaks the tackle. Cade Wolford will move up the field, and he will be held up short, and it appears like it is going to be fourth down. And it is fourth and two. With 40 seconds remaining, the clock running. And the Ironman going to go to punt. Jacob Winters on the punt, and it will be marked at around the 40-yard line, their own 40-yard line, may I add, for Bishop Watterson. 14 seconds remaining. The clock is stopped in the first. Great defensive hold by Bishop Watterson to keep Jackson from moving the chains. Mechanich. In shotgun formation, two receivers to his right, two to his left, and it was a handoff to Zach Weber. Weber still moving. And they'll bring up second down after a gain. A second and four, big gain there. And that is the end of one. The Ironman lead by a solitary point. The score is Jackson 8. Bishop Watterson 7 here at Hernstein Field in Chillicothe, Ohio. And you're watching us live on the JHS Media YouTube channel. Bishop Watterson Band playing Land of a Thousand Dances. As the Eagles come back out onto the field, this time they will be going left or right. A.J. McCannish, pistol formation, hands it off. And it'll go right down the field. And what a big gain there by Zach Weber. And that'll be first and 10 inside Jackson territory. They're going to mark it at the 40-yard line of Jackson. Zach Weber right down the middle. Big game there once again, lining up pistol formation. Mechanich and Weber. Mechanich will once again hand it off to Weber. Weber will get a short game. We're going to mark it still at the 40 yard line. Just shy of a one yard gain. It'll be second down and 10. Kalich pistol formation and play action, and it is caught, and that was reeled in by Brandon Trout, and he is still going. We're going to actually say that was Zach Weber.
And that's still going to be enough for a Bishop Watterson. First and 10 at the 29-yard line. Mechanics in the gun, Weber to the right, three receivers to the right, one to the left. And there's a snap, and he will go back to pass under pressure, and he will keep it. He will go up the field with a burst of speed of uncanny proportions. And there it is, A.J. Mechanics, first down and ten once again for the Bishop Watterson Eagles. They're going to mark him at the 12-yard line. A.J. McCannish with a display of speed brings the Bishop Watterson Eagles closer to the end zone. So some McCannish pistol formation. Weber behind them, two receivers to the right, one to the left, hands it off to Weber. Weber trying to move up the middle and will be taken down. David Norris in on the tackle, number 56 for the Ironman. Second down and six at the eight-yard line, only eight yards from the lead. McCannich in the gun, Weber to the left, two receivers to the left. McCannich will pass, and it is caught! What a grab, what a reel in. And that is a touchdown for Bishop Watterson. That was Brandon Trout in on the reception. And the Eagles will take the lead with 10 minutes even remaining in the second quarter. An eight-yard touchdown pass will give the Eagles the lead. What a reception. We're lining up once again for the extra point. Rudy Kessinger, here's the snap, the hold, the kick is up right through the middle. It is good. 14 to 8 is the score here in the Paper City. The Bishop Watterson Eagles taking the lead over the Jackson Ironman. How will the Ironman respond to that offensive drive right there from the Bishop Watterson Eagles? And you got to think right there that A.J. McCannis scramble. You talk about a burst of speed. And that put him in perfect position to potentially score. We're lining up momentarily for the kickoff. The Ironman to regain the ball. Well, those just tuning in, 14 to 8. Nolan Johnson and Cade Wolford will be back deep to return. And there's the kick and a whistle blown. Appears they may re kick. They will. I'm going to try this all over again. Bishop Watterson moved back. for the kickoff. Here we go. And there's a kick from Rudy Kessinger on this one. Will be returned. And that is Raiden Powell. Powell. There was a 
kill someone over there. Uh, there's people in there. It's the, it's the, uh, it's their coaches. They just have a lot and Jackson will start from their own 33-yard line. Once again, out comes Winters in the Ironman offense. Three receivers to Winters left. Winters in the shotgun formation. There's a handoff right there to Cade Wolford and Nolan Johnson, perhaps. Nolan Johnson. Second and eight at the 35. Winners in the gun. Play action. Winners. Fakes. Under pressure, and he will get the ball out. Incomplete. Great defensive pressure there by Luke Redinger. Nearly got the sack. But Winters able to get the ball out in time. And it'll be third down and eight. And Winters back to pass, rolling to his left. An incomplete pass, and that was intended for Brody Butcher. And it'll bring up fourth down once again for the Ironman. Jacob Winters will be back to punt. And Ryan Ruzinski will be back to return at around the 30-yard line of Bishop Larson. And it is back there, and it will land at around, oh, inside, inside the five. You talk about a heck of a punt, and we'll go out of bounds right around the 15-yard line. What a punt from Jacob Winters. Definitely. Rosinski was not expecting the punt to go back that far. And it, it'll, it'll be first down and 10, Bishop Watterson. Calls an illegal block in the back. And they will now be moved back to their own eight-yard line. McCannish hands it off. Weber. Gain of six will bring up second down and four. Mechanics in the gun, Weber to his right. He'll be back to pass. McCannish rolling to his left, and it is caught, and will continue to move up the field. And on the reception there was number 22, Tim Tommy Haley. And the chains will be moved. First down, Bishop Watterson.
McCannis, pistol formation, Weber behind him. McCannis will hand it off to Weber. Weber will be taken down. And A.J. Denny will be in on the tackle. Gain of three brings up second and seven at their own 32-yard line. Three receivers to the right. McCannish in the gun. Weber to his left. McCannish will be back to throw again, and it is intercepted. No, no, it is dropped. No, oh my. Oh, oh. Oh, what a heartbreaker that was. That could have been a huge interception for the Ironmen when they needed it the most but could not reel it in. It was dropped. Bo Landrum nearly with the interception, but dropped it. One receiver to the left, two to the right. McCannish back to pass. Moving under pressure, McCannish will pass an incomplete fourth down. Fourth and seven, Bishop Watterson will punt. McCannish in the gun. Oh, excuse me, back to pass. <laughs> back to punt. <laughs> Have some audio problems here. What am I saying? And that one will be at around the 10 yard line. We're going to mark it. We'll see where it's marked. Going to mark it short of the 10 at the 9-yard line for Jackson. <laughs> Winners under center. Winners hands it off. It's Cade Wolford. Be a short gain. Brings up second and eight. Winners in the gun. Three receivers to his right in motion. It's Wolford. Tackle down. Gain of one will bring up third down and seven. Mark close to the line. Can I give an extra third and six? Actually, the scoreboard said third and seven. Winters rolls to the right after the shotgun snap, and it is caught. And Brody Butcher on the reception. And will bring up the first down. Winters under center, eye formation, hands it off. Cade Wolford on the carry.
Charlie Bernotis on the tackle for Bishop Watterson. Brings up second down. And it's going to be marked second and seven. Winner split backs, hands it off. Been around the 35 yard line. And on the carry. Winner's on the keep, brings up third and four. It looks like they jumped. And that's an offsides, and that will be a first down for Jackson. <laughs> Moves up to the 39 yard line. After the offsides from Bishop Watterson. Winners in, his, winners in the gun. Wolford in motion. Winners play action. Winners moves back. Under pressure. Rolling to the right. Keeping the ball. And will move down out of bounds. Makes a tough situation into a short gain. Looks like they may rule it no gain. And it will be second and ten. Thought maybe he would have got a yard on that, but nope. <laughs> Winners under center hands it off. That's Eli Browerman. And he'll bring up third down. to the 41-yard line. It is third down and eight. Can the Jackson Ironman convert here on third down? One for three on third down conversions thus far, and a timeout has been called. The score 14-8 to eight with 322 remaining in the half. The Bishop Watterson Eagles leading the Jackson Ironman. Winners under center, eye formation. Hands it off, Cade Wolfer. No, winner's going to keep it. Fake out and will be marked way short of the first down. And once again, the Ironman failed to convert on third down, and it will be fourth down. Winners will be back to punt. 
And the punt is up and will be marked inside the 20, perhaps past the 15. And it is going to be returned by Ryan Rosinski, who will be taken down in Bishop Waterson territory. And it will be first and 10 Waterson with 235 remaining in the first half, the second quarter of action. Now the ball will be marked at the 17-yard line. And score update, Bloom Carroll is leading Sheridan 10 to nothing. The winner of Bloom Carroll and Sheridan will go on to face the winner of this game here. McElfresh under center and it will be out of bounds. McKenna, should I say. Brings up second and two, managing to reel that reception in. Keeping both feet in bounds. Hands it off. Weber moves up, and that is enough for a Bishop Watterson first down. Marked at the 33-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. McCannish in pistol formation, hands it off to Weber. And Jackson managing to hold Weber up. Brody Butcher in on the tackle. Clock continuing to run down, a minute 50 remaining. Going to give him one yard, second and nine. Thirty-four yard line. McCannich in the gun, three to the left, one to the right. McCannich back to pass. McCannich, and it will be caught. And that is Ben Gabrich in on the reception. Number 34 for Bishop Watterson. And timeout has been called. Bishop Watterson taking the timeout. Jackson taking the timeout. And both teams have taken timeouts. Jackson with two. Bishop Watterson with two. Third down and six from their own 37-yard line, Bishop Watterson football. And here's the snap, McCannish back to pass, rolling to his right. McCannish looking for an open man, and it is caught, and that was reeled in by Brandon Trout, and that was inbounds good enough for a first down, and the clock will stop at 111. Big gain by the Eagles. Brings them closer and closer to the end zone inside Jackson territory at the Jackson 43. 14 to 8 is the score for those of you just tuning in here. McAdams alone in the gun. Okay, back to pass again. And this one is caught. That is Brandon Trout. Trout breaking a tackle, moving up the field and will be tackled at around the 35-yard line. One minute remaining in the first half. 
clock continuing to run here. Second down and two. Ball at the 35. McCannish back to pass again. That's a deep ball. That one's towards the end zone. Incomplete. Third down. Pass was intended for Tommy Haley. Brings up third down and two. Will the Ironmen be able to hold them defensively here? Stop the Bishop Watterson Eagles from increasing their lead. But here's the opportunity to do just that. McCannish in the gun alone again. Back to pass. McCannish, and it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Cal Mangini. Fourth and two, 39 points, eight remaining. And Bishop Watterson going for the fourth down conversion. Will Jackson's defense come in when we need them the most? Fourth and two, big play here in the first half. McCannish back to pass, and there's the pass, an incomplete turnover on downs, and the Ironman will set up shop in their own 35-yard line. Nobody there for McCannish to throw it to. Great coverage, and Jackson with 35.4. They still have two timeouts remaining. Alternatively, Bishop Watterson also has two timeouts remaining. See what Jackson can do with such little time remaining. Maybe try to go for the lead if possible. Winners under center. Broerman in motion, shifting to the right. Pass to Cade Wolford, and we'll move up for the first down. Still in bounds, and will be marked out of bounds. Big gain by the Ironman. And that'll bring Jackson inside Bishop Watterson territory with 29.3 remaining, managing to save a timeout by going out of bounds. They're going to mark it short, actually, at around the 49-yard line near midfield. Winners in the gun. Once again, back to pass. And it is incomplete, intended for Cade Wolford. Second and 10. The clock stopped at 25 seconds. Sets up for second down and 10. Winners will keep it. And the Bishop Watterson defense managing to react. Clock running, 15 seconds remaining, 14. And will Jackson go for a timeout, or are they going to let the clock run out? Bishop Watterson has deferred to the second half, and they will get the football to start. And that is the end of the first half. Jackson letting the clock expire, 14 to eight. Bishop Watterson will again get the ball to start. We'll have a 20 minute break here for halftime. And we'll be right back with a second half here at Hernstein Field in Chillicothe, Ohio after this.
Natalie.
And welcome back to Hernstein Field in Chillicothe, Ohio. Hayden Milligan here to call the second half. And, well, the score is now Bishop Watterson 14, Jackson 8. The Eagles leading the Ironmen, and Bishop Watterson elected to the first, so they will get the ball back here in the second half to begin. Cade Wolford had a rushing touchdown for Jackson and rushed in the two-point conversion attempt, which brought Jackson up 8 to nothing initially. But a rushing touchdown from Rosinski and a receiving touchdown from Trout put Bishop Watterson ahead of Jackson, 14-8. 30 seconds remaining on the halftime clock before we continue football here. The Ironman out on the field stretching, preparing for the second half. Some other scores around the area while we wait here. Ireton leading Portsmouth West 21-0. Wheelersburg leading Harvest Prep 21-13. Liberty Center leading Coldwater 14-0. Western Brown leading Tippecanoe 20-0. New Albany leading Upper Arlington 14-7. That's what we have for now, and it is still 10-0. Bloom Carroll leading Sheridan the last we checked. And again, the winner of Bloom, Carroll, and Sheridan will go on to face the winner of this game here, Jackson and Bishop Watterson. The wind's starting to pick up here in Chillicothe. Added a few extra minutes here to the halftime clock after the band cleared off the field. And again, we thank you for joining us. We're sure to have an exciting second half ahead here on the JHS Media YouTube channel. So don't go anywhere. Keep it locked here and live. Live from the first capital of the Buckeye State, the Buckeye State, Chillicothe. Jackson setting up for the kickoff. Billy Hay, the four-string kicker in to kick this opening kickoff for the second half. And back deep to return is Rosinski, as well as Bernadas. And here's the kickoff, second act, second half action underway. Yeah. And it will be returned near the 10-yard line by the Eagles. And they will move up the field, down the sideline, the 40, the 50, right. the 40. Hey, He's got some daylight. The 30, the 20, the 10, 
The five. Touchdown, Bishop Watterson. Bishop Watterson opens up the second half in the biggest way fathomable. A huge kickoff return going the distance. Wow. Bishop Watterson increasing their lead over Jackson 20 to 8. A tough start to the second half for Jackson. Ryan Rosinski was in on that kickoff return, took it to the house. The extra point is up and good. 21 8 is the score here with 11.44 left in the third quarter. Still plenty of football to go, though, Ironman fans. Do not lose hope yet. We got plenty of football left to come here. Kate Wolford, Eli Broerman back deep to return. Setting up for the kickoff. This is only the second play, may I add, of the second half after Bishop Watterson deferred and got the football to start the second half. Bishop Watterson, for those who just tuned in, Ryan Rosinski answering with a huge touchdown for Bishop Watterson. Going to the house. And here's the kickoff. And this one will be marked inside the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Jackson will start at the 20-yard line. As Jackson's offense comes out here for the first half, Cade Wolfers, I mentioned before, running back 74 yards, 13 carries. Cade Wolford also rushed in the only touchdown for Jackson thus far. Winners in the gun. In motion is Wolford. Play action. Winners. It is caught. And that is a first down for Jackson. That was reeled in by number three, Braden Stapleton. And we will move the chains. Clock, a minute, 11 and a half minutes. Winners in the gun. Three receivers to the left. Eli Broerman in motion. Hands it off to Eli Broerman. Eli Broerman breaking a tackle. We'll get the first in some change at around the 46 or 47 yard line. We're going to flag on the play a holding. Official. No. Looks like it was a flag, but no, it's officials' timeout. Personal foul. Face mask. A face mask on the defense. That's going to give Jackson even more yardage. And we're knock, knock, knocking on Bishop Watterson's door. Hands it off to Cade Wolford. Wolford held up by the Bishop Watterson defense. Two or three tacklers in on their butt. It looks like Luke Redinger was in on the tackle, number 65 for Bishop Watterson. Bring up second and nine after a gain of one from Cade Wolford.
Winters in the gun to the right and hands it off to Eli Broerman. Eli Broerman gets a short gain. Third and five. Gain of three on the play. And a timeout is taken for an injured player on the field. And now come the trainers, Jason Crawford from Jackson coming out. That is number 65, Luke Riedlinger, down on the field. Trainers tending to him. Wait, how do I do that? Managing to get off the field is Relinger. Lippin having a hard time putting any sort of pressure on his right foot. But it'll be third and five from the Bishop Watterson 35 yard line. Jackson football for those tuning in. Winners under center, I formation. One receiver to the right. Hands it off to Cade Wolford. Cade Wolford moves to the left. Cade Wolford will get the first down, perhaps, and some more. Gonna move the chains, and that is a Jackson first and ten. I gotta mark the ball at the 24 yard line. There's again I formation under center receiver to the left this time, handing it off, and that is Cade Wolford. May have got a short gate on that one. Gonna give him a gain of two. Second down and eight. Nine minutes remaining. The clock running in the third quarter. The Ironman down 21 to eight here in Chillicothe. What is eye formation? Handing it off to Cade Wolford. Cade Wolford trying to move up the field. And Wolford will get another short gain. And Dominic Purcell in on the tackle for Bishop Watterson. And it will be a gain of four, third down and four. Jackson struggling with third down conversions thus far in the game. Will they be able to turn it around here and get a first down and ten? Is Lady Luck on the side of the Ironman? Setting up winners under center, split backs behind him. Winner hands it off. Yeah, looks like we may have got the first down. Eli Broerman on the carry. Uh, they're going to mark it fourth. Short by a yard, fourth down and one. Clock continuing to run. What is Jackson going to do here? Bishop Watterson's defense is going to need something big, but Jackson's offense as well is going to need something big. From the 18, you know, from the 15 yard line, excuse me. Winners under center eye formation. Only a yard to go. Winner sneaks. Did he get it? Did he get it? We'll see. And, there, and it looks like it is a turnover on downs. Bishop Watterson managing to hold Jacob Winters at the line. And Bishop Watterson will start from their own 15-yard line as a gust of wind continues to come through.
McAnish pass is complete to Tommy Haley. And it brings up second down. Gain of three, second and seven. McAnish in the gun, Zach Weber to his left. Hands it up. Zach Weber on the ball carry, short gain. Like Tyler Eggers perhaps in on the tackle. Brings up third down and four. Big third down coming up here for Jackson after failing to convert on fourth down before. McCaffrey. And he's going to keep it. And there's the pass, and it is caught. I was going to say it's going to hit the, hit the turf. It hit the turf, and there's an Ironman still down on the field. And that appears to be, that's A.J. Denny. A.J. Denny, the senior, down on the field, injury timeout. But it will be fourth down and four when we continue. A.J. Denny still down, invisible pain, and it's his left ankle, not able to put any pressure on it. Similar injury happened with Luke Relinger earlier for Bishop Watterson, as A.J. Denny will be taken back to the sidelines as it'll be fourth down here for Bishop Watterson. Or they will elect to punt. Zinski back to punt. And there's the punt. It is up. And that's a high punt, and it will be returned. No, and it will be fair catch called, and that was Jake Wood. Jake with Wood with a fair catch. Jackson once again with the football. 640 remaining in the third quarter. What can the Ironman do here? Three receivers to the right. Winners in the gun. Winters back to pass. Winters looking in. He finds his open man. That's Cade Wolford. Cade Wolford manages to spin off a defender and will get a gain, but will be second down. Charlie Bernotta sent on the tackle. A yard short, second down and one. Winner setting up I formation. One receiver in the backfield. Handing it off to Cade Wolford, and there's the first down. The Ironman fans visibly upset about something that happened. 
Can I get a good glimpse of it over here? Claw continuing to run. Less than six and a half minutes remain in the third quarter. Jackson in Bishop Watterson territory at the 43-yard line of Watterson. Jackson getting the Ironman fans behind them. Bishop Watterson, Eagles fans behind them. First down and 10. Winners in the gun. Once again in a third down situation. Wolford a single yard away from 100 yards on the game. Nineteen carries, hands it off. Winman going to keep it at all. Winners on the keep, and the defense holds them once again. And what appears to be a reoccurring theme for the Jackson Ironman, unable to do anything on third down. It is fourth and about the size of Chillicothe, Ohio. Fourth and 12. Jacob Winters back to punt. Ryan Rosinski to return the punt. Winters punt is up. And it'll bounce around the 10 yard line. Inside the five, and oh. And after that punt by Jacob Winters, Bishop Watterson will be marked at their own one yard line. Mechanich in the pistol inside their own end zone. Mechanich hands it off. Jackson cannot capitalize there. And it will be a gain. It'll be second down and three at the eight yard line. Jackson trying to pressure, but to no avail. Four minutes remaining, clock running in the third. Hands it off again, and that was what appears to be, from my perspective, Weber. Brings up third down. Third down and three. Jackson needs a big defensive play here. Campers in the gun. Mechanich. And a high snap, and it's a safety. That's a touchdown. The touchdown. It was recovered by Jackson. It was recovered. And Jackson, not out yet, folks. Do not count out the Ironman. Who got that? Who got that? It appears to have been recovered by number 42, Drew Wiley. Jackson, what a touchdown. Oh, my. Coach Hall appears to be smiling with the biggest smile in the world. If happiness could be a physical embodiment, a human being, it would be Coach Hall right now. Going once again for a two-point conversion, we... 
once again. Winters in the gun. Rolls to the right. Winters throws. And the two-point attempt is good. Cade Wolford in on the reception. 21 to 16. We got ourselves a ball game in the Paper City, folks. Jackson with a big defensive play when they needed it the most. Five point differential. Setting up for the kickoff, Billy Hay. And back to return is Ryan Rosinski. As well as Charlie Bernotus. Billy Hay with the kickoff. Here we go, right down the middle, and it will be returned at around the 10 yard line. Moves up the field, moves to the left. 20. He goes around the 33 or 34 yard line, their own 33, 34 may I add. We'll see where it is marked. And that is where Bishop Watterson will set up shop. First and 10 at the 33 yard line. A.J. McCannish in the gun. McCannish hands it off. And right down the middle, taken down. Jacob Winters in on the tackle. That was Zach Weber on the carry. And that's enough for a first down. Bishop Watterson trying to stay in it. Trying to increase their lead over Jackson with 2.45 remaining running clock at the moment. McCannich hands it off to Weber. Weber finds an opening, goes around the 49 or 48 yard line. Well, the 48. They're marking at the 50, actually. Mark's a little short. Knee came down. And it is second and four at center field. In the gun, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Hands it off, and that is Weber. And there's a big tackle there by Jackson. And then on the tackle, looks like it was Drew Wiley. And it is third down and three. The last time we were in a third down situation, it was a snap that was bad, and Jackson recovered it in the end zone. We're not going to have a situation like that, but what can we do here? Third down and three. The Ironman fans getting behind Jackson. The Eagles fans getting behind Bishop Watterson. A big play. This could potentially mean a lot in this ballgame. Three receivers lined up to the left, one to the right. Hands it off. Back to pass. McCann fresh, and it is, oh my goodness, it is intercepted. The ball has been intercepted. Jackson with a big turnover. It was like he, they say it was no. They said incomplete, no. They in and out of his hands. Oof. Oh, man. The clock continuing to run. Fourth and three. Ball at the 49-yard line. Gain of one. Back to punt. Two Ironmen back deep to return. And here's the punt. It's up. That's a high one. Be returned around the, inside the 15. 
bouncing up around the 15 or 16 yard line. That's where Jackson will start. 31 seconds remaining in the third. Jackson's offense needs to gain the lead. Five point differential. Winners under center, eye formation. One receiver to the left. Hands it off. Eli Broman now appears to have been Cade Wolford on the carry. And Cade Wolford with a short gain. Short gain, second and eight. The clock running. 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Was that the last play? They may get one last snap in here. We'll see in a moment. It appears that we will not. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. And ladies and gentlemen... Fasten your seat belts and make sure they're in tight. We got ourselves a five-point differential. Anything can happen in the fourth quarter. 21-16, the Bishop Watterson Eagles leading the Jackson Ironmen here on the JHS Media YouTube channel. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Ugh. Second down and eight to start the fourth quarter. Winners in the gun. Fumble, fumble, and it is recovered by Jackson. It appears that Winners scooped it up. But if so, that is a huge loss. And something that Jackson definitely did not need right now. It's going to be third and a country mile. Third and 17. Officials took a timeout. <laughs> Winners in the gun. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Broman in motion, moving to the left, to the left. And it is caught. Brings up a short game. Bo Landrum in on the reception for Jackson. Bring up fourth down. Brings up fourth and seven to be specific. And winners will be back to punt. While Rosinski waits near midfield for the punt. And there's the punt. That was a short punt. Around the 40 yard line, they're gonna mark it at around the 37 yard line. Bishop Watterson starting off in Jackson territory. <laughs> Mechanic hands it off to Weber. Weber down the field. Weber, oh, taken down. And on the tackle was Tucker Williams. Brings up a six-yard gain, second down and four at the Jackson 31-yard line. Mm -hmm. 
Mechanich in the gun. Two receivers to the right. Hands it off to Weber. And Weber taken down. It appears like it is going to be a first down. It's going to be first down and 10 at the Jackson 24. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Mechanic in the gun, and there's a pass, and it is caught. Brandon Trout in on the reception. Second down and five at the 19-yard line. McCannis hands it off to Weber. Weber breaks the tackle and is taken down. <laughs> taken down by multiple Ironmen. And brings up third and one. Jackson's defense needs to step up here. Eight and a half minutes remaining in this ball game. Bishop Watterson leading by five. Canich hands it off, and there's the first. Weber on the carry. If anything right now as well, Bishop Watterson running down the clock some as well. Eight minutes remaining in the game at the 13-yard line. McCannich in the gun, Weber to his right. Hands it off to Weber. Weber has an opening and taken down. He's going to be short of the end zone. At the two-yard line, first and goal, Bishop Watterson. Mechanics in the gun, hands it off to Weber. Weber appears to be short, and he is. Second and goal. Two yard loss. We're marking a one yard loss at the three yard line. Be a long three. Two receivers to the right. Mechanics in the gun. Hands it off. And there's a hold. There's a flag on the play. And it's going to be against Bishop Watterson to hold. Six thirty one remaining here. And it's going to be a repeat of second down from the eighteen yard line. Second and goal has never been so far away from the goal. Hands it off to Weber. Weber taken down third and goal, short of the 10 yard line. Mm -hmm. 
Third down and goal. Ball marked at the 13-yard line. McHannish by himself in the gun. Empty backfield. And he's taken down for a sack. Credit it to number 20, Landon Camp. Fourth down and goal. And we'll see what Bishop Watterson has in mind here. They're going for a field goal. That's going to be about a 31-yard attempt. We'll see if the wind is in the favor of the Eagles. Fourth and goal. Here's the kick. Coming up momentarily. There's the snap. The kick. It is up. And it is good. 24 to 16 is the score. The Bishop Watterson Eagles leading by eight. 5-11 remaining in the game. Jackson to receive the ball. Rudy Kessinger lined up to kick. And there's the kick, and it will be a touchback. Jackson will start at the 20. An eight-point differential. Jackson needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie this ball game up. Jackson has no kicker to kick PATs, so Jackson has been going for two-point attempts throughout the duration of this game for that very reason. Billy Hay, the four-string kicker coming in for kickoffs, but not for field goals. Winners under center, hands it off. And a huge, huge play there defensively by Bishop Watterson. Brings up second and 12 at their own 19-yard line. Winners under center again. Winners going to keep it. Winners, and he's taken down uh, yet another defensive play by Bishop Watterson, brings up third down. Gain of one, brings up third and 11. Clock running, four minutes remaining in this contest. Everything on the line. Winners back to throw. It is caught. Oh, what a reception, but what a hit as well. Braden Stapleton reels it in. But they're, sh they're going to move the chains, and that's going to be a Jackson first down, but sacrificing his body in the process with a huge hit. And he got blasted. And I mean blasted. That may be the hit of the game. Three and a half minutes remaining. Jackson still in this one. Hands it off. Cade Wolford. Cade Wolford breaks the tackle. Jumps over a defender. And will be at around the 38-yard line. Mark him at the 37. Second down and four.
Wolford under center. I mean, Winters under center, excuse me. Back to Wolford. Wolford gets the first down. Still going, goes out of bounds. Cade Wolford once again showing up when we need him. And Jackson will once again move the chains. The clock stops at 2.51. The ball going to be marked at the 48-yard line of Jackson. Moving dangerously close to Bishop Watterson territory. Winners alone. Three receivers to the right. Wolford moving to the left. Winners going to keep. Winners moves up and will get a gain. Second and about three or four. The market's second and three. Lined up by formation once again. One receiver to the left. Winner hands it off to Cade Wolford. And they'll bring up third down. Third and very manageable. Brings up. It's going to be third down and one. And we only have two minutes remaining. Winners under center again. Tosses it back to Cade Wolford. Cade Wolford breaks the tackle. Moves down. It looks like it is going to be a first down. And it is. Clock stopped at 146. Cade Wolford running out of bounds. Jackson has all three timeouts still. Clock now running again. Winners play action, deep ball, and that one intercepted, and there's a flag, there's a flag, and it looks like it's going to be for pass interference. Oh, an easy pass interference call, and, well, that could have been really, really bad. Oh, my. It appears the football gods are smiling down on the Ironmen at the moment, saving them from doom. And there's going to be a timeout called. Bishop Watterson takes the timeout. They're up by eight, 24 to 16, 127 remaining as Jackson is on the Bishop Watterson 26-yard line, 26 yards away from a touchdown. If Jackson gets a touchdown here, they'll still have to go for the two-point conversion. And at the very least, if we get to that point, we can take this into overtime. First down and ten. One twenty. A minute twenty remaining. Second down and twelve.
Second and 12. Winners in the gun. Two backs to his left and right. And two receivers, one to the left, one to the right. Winners play action. Deep ball. It's caught. It is caught by Eli Broerman. Inside the 10-yard line. And it is first down, Jackson. First and goal at the nine. One minute remaining. Rorman shifts to the left, passes it back to Wolford. Wolford, Cade Wolford, moves in at around a big gain. I mentioned that clock stopped. We'll see where they're going to mark it. And around the five. It's going to be at the two yard line. Jackson two yards away from a touchdown. But not only they need the touchdown, they need the two point attempt. Hands it off. It's in. It's in. It's not. It is touchdown. Touchdown, Jackson. Now we need the two point conversion. 39.8 remaining. Kate Wolford rushing it in. And a timeout called by Jackson. This play may very well determine the entire course of the season. Jackson needs this two-point attempt. It's not a one, it's a need. And here we go, 24 to 22. Jackson needs this two-point attempt. Runners lined up, whistle blown. And another timeout has been called, this time by Bishop Watterson. And the suspense lingers for a little bit longer. As to whether or not we will get into the end zone. Both teams with one timeout remaining. 39.8 again, the time for those tuning in. This two-point conversion attempt coming up for Jackson could very well send this game into overtime in Chillicothe. The offense coming back out. Watterson fans getting behind the Eagles. The Ironman fans getting behind the Ironman. This right here, folks, could be the ball game. And it could be the deciding factor in everything. And Winters under center. Hands it off. Winters and a pass. It's incomplete. No. Oh, man. Oh, I think my heart just dropped to the floor. Oh, no. The two point attempt is no good. And there are no flags. Bishop Watterson could be poised to beat the Jackson Ironman for the first time ever in tournament history.
But what a season it has been for the Jackson Ironman. And what appears to be the last time that our seniors will take the field. You hate to see it end like this. You really do. But at the same time, you got to commend the Ironman, Ironman fans, for making it this far. Don't be upset. Just be glad we've made it this far and be anticipating what's to come ahead. But we're going for an onside kick. This right here. We'll see what happens here. And the onside, that would have been recovered by Bishop Watterson, but a timeout was called. So Bishop Watterson may have just shot themselves in the foot. The onside kick, the whistle was blown before, and a timeout was called by Watterson. The onside kick would have been recovered by Bishop Watterson had the whistle not been blown. It does look like Jackson is not content on going down so easily, going for an onside kick attempt. Jackson get the onside. They will have one timeout remaining, and a score of any sort would get them the lead, and most likely at this point, the victory. Rhetorical question, obviously. Most of you are watching at home, but do any of you have fingernails left? Setting up again for the onside kick is Billy Hay. 39.8. And the onside kick attempt is going to be who got it. And it is Bishop Watterson. No timeout to save it there. And that is most likely going to be the ball game. Thirty-nine point eight still on the clock. One timeout remaining for Jackson. Setting up in the gun. And there's the knee. One timeout, and it is taken. 36.9 remaining in the game. 24 to 22. Second down and 16 after the knee. No timeouts left for Jackson. And here it is, another knee. And that appears like it is going to be the ball game, folks. The clock running down, 30 seconds, and it is over. In 2015, Jackson defeated Bishop Watterson in this very field by a score of 14 to nothing. Seven years later, the same field, the same city, different players, and Bishop Watterson finally defeats the Jackson Ironman in tournament action. And what a game this was, ladies and gentlemen, and I was glad to call it. But this is where we're going to sign off. I would like to thank everybody for tuning in. I'd like to thank everyone back at home as well. I would like to also thank Dakota Berry, Griffin Peters, 
Hayden Jarvis, and of course, Mr. Adam Ripeth for bringing me back. It's always a pleasure to be here. But until next time, this is Hayden Milliken saying so long from the Paper City.